behind the platform so that we can meet and get ready. We're inviting our brother Derek Taylor, uh, Ursuline, thank you also, uh, Rick Waters, and our guest speaker. Thank you so much. Folks, so let me share with you a few announcements of some of the things that are taking place. A lot of activities, and uh, no more folks are on their way. So to begin with, uh, again, we've had announced that officially it is optional to wear face masks. And if you choose to wear them, by all means, take care of yourself. Others uh, who are already vaccinated and even have the booster shot, that is great. Uh, but we're just letting you know, face masks are optional. Our nominating committee list, as it appears here for the very first reading, the five who will represent the nominating committee on the screen, Carol Crawford, Melisha Peterson, Wayne Card, Dale Van Witzenberg, Myrna Valeris, and the alternates, Luella LaRoche, and Derek Taylor. And so this is the first reading. Next Sabbath, we will have the second and final reading. It will then go to uh, vote motion. We're going to then have the cert, that part of the nominating committee final vote. It's going to be at the end of the worship service. We're inviting all of our members, please stay behind so that we can do that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, any questions or any uh, comments or anything, uh, give me a phone call. And thank you for that. Uh, the website is our church website, as we have been for so long sharing with you with all the information of activities. Uh, women's ministry and also with Oaks, Osceola Adventist Christian School, is having a drive. I know that students and teachers do not want to hear about school right now. They're enjoying their break and vacation. But it's around the corner. And so we have a bin in the foyer as you're about to exit to the final double doors on the right. We want to have those bins so that you can definitely uh, contribute. There is a list, and this list has been compiled, and we're gonna see about having copies for you so that when you go shopping to your favorite store or any place that you customarily attend, that you would make sure you follow through and look through the list. Whatever you can give will make a huge difference. It will be helpful for our school, uh, students as well as for your students or your kids. So it's not only for those who attend Oaks. We're looking at how to help parents your kids out. So we'll have this. This is posted on the website. If you go in, you will have access to it. And we will give you hands-on uh, flyers. Today, uh, I understand uh, this is maybe on hold, the upper portion, the Adventurers and Pathfinders. Our leaders are actually out. I think they're on a sabbatical on the Sabbath. That makes sense, right? And so they are not with us, uh, unless I hear otherwise. But Vespers tonight at 6 p.m. And we're inviting you to come and join us. We're going to have a little worship song service. And then we're going to continue with creatures that defy evolution. So that's going to be a very uh, wonderful time together. I do want to take a moment. I want to thank uh, our brother Sergio and also Santiago. They have helped us in having these large monitors up on the wall so that we can enjoy the brightness and the color uh, that uh, today's technology affords. So we're still working on getting some things all worked out, but soon we will raise the projection screen behind. We'll be able to see that stained glass and uh, it will be something of a blessing. So thank you so much for all the help and the support. Family game day, that's right around the corner. In fact, it's so around the corner that that's tomorrow. And so tomorrow, join us from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. We're gonna have uh, there in the multi-purpose you know, the temperatures are really been uh, so high, hot, humid. And so indoors, all are welcome, bring a friend, and we have activities there. Among the items, we have ball and spoon race at 
Active Games, Penguin Waddle, Balloon Pop, and more. You can barely see that one. So bring your own games too. And folks, if you haven't had a good Sunday, we're looking forward to that. A Sunday on a Sunday, okay? So come and join. Thank you. We want to express our condolences to our sister Lena Suarez Mullins, as well as the, the rest of the Hunter family uh, for their loss. William Hunter passed away on Tuesday, is our understanding. And so our sympathies to them. And we are looking to a service. Let me share a little bit about the services. The services will be July 7th on Thursday at from 4 to 8 p.m. at Osceola Memory Gardens here in Kissimmee. Then we'll have on Friday, July 8th, 11 a.m. service being held here. Uh, we'll have a graveside service that follows and then a repast uh, at the Kissimmee Country Golf Club. Is, we'll get more details for you. So please, those who are able to join us as we continue to lift up William Hunter's family in our prayers. We have many others who are coming from England. We have some transfers, so let me uh, invite our sister, uh, Myra Valeras. Bob, good to see you. Myra, while we're about to do this, you got some news you want to share? Yes. All right, cool. <laughs> And then immediately after our sister is all done, we're going to invite our praise team to join and lead us in worship this morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Church. I will do the. Um, I will be reading the second reading of the transfer of a membership and a transfer out. Uh, transferring in is Sister Bridget Geddes Akal, and she's transferring from the. Atlanta Advent Hope Seven Day Adventist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And then transferring out will be Drew Cookinmaster, and he is transferring to the Louisville First Seven Day Adventist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. And the pastor, when I'm done here, will take the church vote. But on a personal note, I'm standing here before you as a proud, proud, proud grandmother. Uh, my youngest son, um, Bob and, uh, and my youngest son had a baby last night, a baby boy. He is seven pounds, six ounces, and he is 21 inches small. <laughs> and we are just blessed. And he personally wanted me to thank the Cassini Church because uh, from the moment um, my family came to this church, uh, this church has been so opening to him and has led, you will never know how much being part of this church has kept him spiritually Amen. centered. Amen. So when, when, when Sister Daddy was talking about uh, uh, setting the fundamentals for Sabbath school, trust me church, I am a witness. My husband and I are a witness. And he wanted to thank the church personally for the people that have been praying for him and for, um, and for the land and for the baby. We thank you all. We ask you now to just continue to keep them in prayer. Thank you. Amen. 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 We're now going to we're now going to begin our world song service. So we hope that you enjoy it and that you will be blessed. Jesus. Oh yes, we love Jesus. I'm sure you love Jesus. 
Jesus. I'm sure I love Jesus. Tell me why you love Jesus. Here's why I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. That's the reason for all I to love him. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Now I want you to go back to the time when you first met Jesus. Heaven came down, right? You were filled with joy. You were filled with gladness. At this time, we're going to sing. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul.
you have 10,000 reasons to praise God this morning. So I want you to join with us and say, Bless the Lord, O my soul.
thank you, Lord, for bringing us to your house of worship. Lord, we thank you that as a family we can come from all different directions and unite together. But Lord, we know that we cannot be united unless you are in the midst. And so we invite your presence to be with us, God. We pray that your Holy Spirit may come into our hearts. We give him permission, Lord, so that as we have heard and will hear the word, that those words that are from you uh, may be cemented in our hearts by your Spirit. Be with us today. We give you all of those rights in Jesus' name. Our opening song number 532, day by day and with each passing moment, who finds strength. Santiago also, and we have Michael, and they are under Jerissa, 
our director. So thank you so much. I think Michael is the newest one added to the team assisting us. And so we're blessed. Let me share it because I left out our speaker this morning. Our speaker this morning is familiar to many because even in the foyer they were getting hugs. Not only our speaker is Manny Ojeda, but accompanied by his wife, Claribel Fernandez Ojeda. We welcome you as you've come here. Um, this is not your first time, but you're here with your children also. We have Elia uh, and Josiah, and we welcome them. They happen to be, for those who don't know, and that's only a few, right? They happen to be, Manny is uh, the son of Fe Tres Palacios, and his stepfather is Rene. There he is. And so we're so grateful. I was just sharing how much uh, the Tres Palacios are a blessing to all of us and to our own ministry here. And so we're grateful to have you. Let me share a little bit more about Manny and Clady. Started ministry in 2001 in Indiana. They have served in the states of Indiana, Illinois, and Florida. They reside in the Tampa area, enjoying time with their boys as they continue to grow, and their family around Florida. The Ojedas love to camp, the camping, even in the hot weather. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not as much. They serve God whenever they have the opportunity, and I want to thank you for accepting the invitation to be here. And our congregation welcomes you today. Will you say hello to the Ojeda family? Hello. Amen. And welcome back. How's that? Very soon uh, we'll hear the words in a message brought to us by our brother. Uh, I don't want to forget, because some of you just joined us in a few minutes while we were getting ready. Tomorrow at 2 p.m., we're having a social, and we want to come together and have fun, food, friends, and did I say food too? So Sunday, uh, we're going to have Sundays and games and all that. So 2 to 5 p.m., so look forward to seeing you all. Thank you, and now... A special time on Elder Derek leading us in prayer. Thank you, Pastor. This time when we consecrate, we consecrate ourselves, but at this time, those who can kneel, we ask them to kind of do so. As you see, God has another thing that we do. Most gracious God, we want to thank you once again for your protection throughout this week. And Father, as we come to your house to worship you this morning, may you send your Holy Spirit to mingle among each and every one of us. May we claim that promises that you have given to us, Father, that you will be with us irrespective of what we're going through. You never leave us alone. So at this time, dear Father, I want to lift up the hunter's family who have lost their father. Mm -hmm. We know, Father, he's not dead, but he's asleep. And when you come, if his life is faithful, you will bring him to that promise land that he promised us. So, Father, let us tell brothers that when we fall asleep, as far as we do not know, like how does we do not have no hope, because we are hoping. And we know you're coming back for us. We want to lift up our dear sister, Aska, who's going to have a service soon. Be with the doctor, be with her. Strengthen her, give her the courage that you are the great physician. And everything is possible. You will give her the healing, the strength that she needs to overcome. Father, we want to lift up the visitor who is among us today. They come for that special service. They come to hear your words proclaimed to them. May you touch their heart, Father, that when they leave this place, they can recognize that they were in your presence. For what, Father, we want to lift up your man's servant who's going to bring us to bread of life. May the word he speak may not be his, but that which comes from his. Amen. And may he celebrate the life and the soul of each and every one that bowed before you this morning. Those who are online and, and watching in their home, that when we leave here today, we can say, 
you were the one that brought us here to hear this word. And we may go and live it in our life. Be with the leaders of this church, Father, as we go through the process of nominating leaders to lead us through the rest of the year. May your spirit be with each and every one that is not nominating committee. And may unity and strength be with each and every one of us. That what we do, Father, we may not do for ourselves, but your Holy Spirit that speak to us and allow us to do your work according to your will. Be with each and every one of us, we ask in Jesus' precious name. Good morning again, church. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, boys and girls. I see our youngest one, he's the happiest and he's smiling. <laughs> I want to um, tell you a story this morning. And I'd like for you to listen attentively, boys and girls. During World War II, a soldier was separated from his unit on an island. The fighting had been so intense, and in the smoke and the crossfire, he had lost touch with his comrades. In other words, his friends. I'm not sure if everybody knows that word, comrade. That's an old word. Alone in the jungle, he could hear enemy soldiers coming his direction. Scrambling for cover, he found his way up a high ridge to several small caves in the rock. Quickly, he crawled inside one of the caves. Although safe for the moment, he realized that once the enemy soldiers looking for him swept up the ridge, they would quickly search all the caves and he would be killed. As he waited, he prayed, Lord, please spare my life. Whatever will happen, I love you and trust you. Amen. After praying, he lay quietly listening to the enemy begin to draw close. He thought, well, I guess the Lord isn't going to help me out this one. Then he saw a spider begin to build a web over the front of his cave. Ha! Huh, he thought, what I need is a brick wall. And what the Lord has sent me is a spider web. God does have a sense of humor. As the enemy drew closer, he watched from the darkness of his hideout and could see them searching one cave after another. As they came to his, he got ready to make his last stand. But then he heard the leader of the soldiers say, you may as well ignore looking in this cave. If he had entered here, this web well would have been broken. So they left and he was delivered. To his amazement, however, after glancing in the direction of his cave, they moved on. Suddenly he realized that with the spider web over the entrance, his cave looked as if no one had entered for quite a while. Lord, please forgive me, he prayed. I have, got to, I have forgotten that in you, a spider's web is stronger than a brick wall. He will use the most foolish things in this world to confound the wise. God is your protector if you believe in him. I want you boys and girls to remember that no matter where you are in life, no matter how difficult your life gets, God is always your protector. And he can take you from whatever situation that you find yourself in, and he can lift you up to a higher place. He will protect you. And so I want you to remember that, and always, always remember that your prayer is very powerful. And at this moment, I just want to say a prayer on behalf of the children. Could you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that we are able to rely on you for everything. 
We thank you, Father, that you have promised that you will be with us no matter where we are and no matter where we go. And so, Lord, I ask that you help us to have faith and trust that you are with us everywhere we go. Help your children from the smallest to the oldest. May you help them to grow spiritually and may you help them, Lord, to love you and to serve you for the rest of their lives. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. We come to this time now on our worship through giving. One thing that we all need to remember, and I'm going to expound on that even more as I go through a closing on this. The Lord asks us to give 10% of what he's blessed us with. And the thing that I like about that, that he says, and see if I will pour out from the windows of heaven more than you can ever, ever hold. We need to always remember that. We can't outdo God. You cannot outgive Him. Keep that in mind when you're thinking about Him. That 10% that He's asking for is to lead His church, lead His ministries, take care of His pastors, but even more so, what we're all looking for is the expediting of his coming. This is one of those areas that expedites his coming, along with the fact that I'm not coming till every ear has heard and know who I am and have made a decision. Now, I say we can't outgive God. You give that 10%, that 90% may take you even further, but you won't know till you do it. You may have an illness that's about to befall you tonight, tomorrow. Suddenly is wiped away. There are blessings. And I'm gonna tell you, I, 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 I'm blessed. Midnight last night, I turned 73. Amen. This morning, I heard the pitter patter of prayer feats. My twins. Happy birthday, Papa. And we came to give him a kiss. I come into service, Brother Derek, greeting me with the happy birthday. I get the good news from Sister Mara, who was talking to me a month or so ago. Her fourth son has blessed them. She and Bob with the grandson yesterday. So God is easy looking. And we need to remember Myra, Bob, he gave us those children, we need to give them back to everybody here that belongs to you as well. So now let me do this prayer. Father God, we want to thank you for those that are us that we have blessed us to be able to give those that want to give, but for whatever reason they can. We pray the Lord that this giving goes into the expediting of your coming and use in whatever manner that you may see fit. We thank you, Father. We thank you for all that you've done and given us, each and every one of us, every day. We thank you, Lord. And praise your name. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. Now let me close with this. Our normal procedure lately for now for uh, collecting the tithes and offerings, we'll have two deacons at the back door. At the end of service is when you we'll turn your tithes and offerings in. We're no longer going through the pews to, to do that. So we we'll look forward to seeing each and every one of you at the back doors at the end of the service. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rick. One of the things that I went in the back and left out, but I'm grateful for our church clerk who brought the names for transferring out and also transferring in. But we need an official motion 
And so transferring out, this is today the second reading, Drew Cook and Master, transferring to Louisville First Seventh-day Adventist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. We would like to call right now for a motion to accept transfer. Is there a motion? There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of the transfer, would you please signify with your hands raised? Thank you. I believe we have a motion to go forward. And thank you so much. Also, there is the good news is while we have a transfer out, and, and we honor the requests of those who need to transfer to another congregation, we have a transfer in opportunity. Amen. And today we have Bridget Gillis, and I'm going to need help. Up. Pow, got it right. Okay. <laughs> Bridget Geddes, Apal, would you just stand for a moment? I know you're accompanied by your son, Aiden. Aiden is a pathfinder here in our club. And uh, sister, uh, folks, you just saw her. She's been with us for a little while now, joining and being involved here. Uh, I'd like to invite, if there is a motion to receive her into membership of the Kissimmee Seventh-day Advent. There is a motion. Is there a second? There is seconds. All right, all those in favor, would you please signify? Amen. Let's put our heads together. Welcome our sister and her son. Also glad to have you here. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you, Derek. The scripture reading this morning is taken from Ezekiel 37, 1 to 4. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, there's a Bible in front of you in the pew. I'd like to hear those pages turn as we read the scripture. So um, I'll give you a few minutes to uh, go to your phone or go to the Bible. Whichever, whichever one. So let's read it together. Ezekiel 37, 1 to 4. Okay, I'd like to hear those pages. Um, I'm reading from the New King James um, Version. And it said, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the body, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bone, hear the words of the Lord. May God have a blessing to the reading. Good morning, happy Sabbath to your family. It's so good to be here with you. Um, Pastor informed me that our special music is going to be shifted over to the end of the sermon, so that's why I'm up here. But it is good to be. I feel like I'm back home, elders, um, it, and Pastor Amato, thank you for the invitation. Um, and I really want to tell you on behalf of our family, of, of Faye and, and Renee's family, we want, we want to thank you for praying with them. You know, we know it's been a very difficult year for, for my mom with the surgery and the recuperation. And for those of you that have prayed for her, for those of you that have uh, visited or just given that encouraging phone call, thank you for ministering to our family. Um, we're all blessed because of your ministry. So we really appreciate it. Um, you know, I want to say something to the kids here today. Uh, kids, there's three words that I want you to be searching for. You listening? Ready? Three words. And this is what I want you to do with those three words. You listening? I need you to get a piece of paper and a pen. Now, some of you may be allowed to have that little device that has a screen that you can write stuff in there. So instead of using that device to go and play games, maybe what you could do is take these three words that I want to tell you, and every time in my sermon that I say those three words, I need you to write down. So what you're going to do is you're going to write down three words on a piece of paper or a device, and then every time I say those three words in my sermon, you're going to write number one. He said it twice. He said it three times. He said it. Are you with me? You get it? 
So you're gonna write down basically how many times I say those three words. Now, I gotta be very honest with you, if your parents gave you a device to do this little exercise, don't use the device to go on games, right? Say amen. Good, very good. Good, glad to hear that. So the three words are as follows. Prophesy. That's gonna be a complicated word to write down, but bear with me. P-H-E-S-Y. Prophesy. Your parents can help you with it. That's the first word. The second word of kids is going to be spirit. Spirit. S-P-I-R-I-T. Spirit. Prophesy. Spirit. The third word is going to be gospel. G O S P. E L. Gospel. Three words. You're going to have to sort of listen to the sermon today because if you you need to tell me at the end of the sermon how many times I said those words. Because I'm going to say them quite a bit. Okay? Good. We're there. So, before we start, shall we re invite the presence of God to be with us? Amen. Let's make sure He's inside of us. Lord, we want to thank you so much that once again we can be here this morning. Father, please send your spirit to be with us so that the words that we hear. Uh, may be cemented and implanted into our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, um, as Adventists, an empire that comes to mind every time we read the Bible is the Babylonian Empire. Right? Yeah. It's ingrained in our theology. If you go to the book of Revelation, that word is in there quite a bit. Uh, if you go throughout the Bible, we see the historical Babylon, an actual nation that invaded God's people, took God's people out, can, do you know the famous king that ruled that empire? Remember him? King Nebi? Nebuchadnezzar, right? Nebuchadnezzar, yeah. And, you know, Babylon was a fascinating place. And as a world empire, Babylon did a lot of things for this world and put a lot of things in motion. Do you know that the Babylonians had created one of the first maps? Um, they, around 2300 BC, they created a map that covered the region of Babylonian, Babylonia during the Akkadian Empire. And this map was important for trade and business because it showed trade routes and was used as a reference during military campaigns. They knew the importance of maps. How else could they have found Israel? Think about it. Somebody had to go out there and map these things out. I mean, they were an advanced civilization at that time. So, you know, the first map. I know today we use a GPS. Thank you, Babylon. Sorry, that sounds wrong, but it's true. <laughs> Thank you, Babylon. I don't mean to say that, but anyway, nonetheless, cuneiform. The Babylonians believed in rec creating records. And we have cuneiform recording, right? Um, which originated around again 3400 BC, which is the first known form of written communication. The cuneiform can be regarded as a language as, as it is comprised of less than a thousand characters, and these characters were used for accounting, administrative, and business purposes. People used this. Cuneiform, the Babylonians are very interesting people. They also uh, created a very rudimentary plow made out of wood so they could break the ground. And we all know that agriculture creates a society. It, it forms a strong society. People have to eat, right? People have to be sustained. Uh, stable foods create a stable political environment. So you can grow if you're a country. And the Babylonians are credited for creating the plow. Um, urbanization. We know Babylon was a huge urban center. We see it in Iraq. We see its ruins, right? And so urbanization could be sort of a tribute to Babylon. You bring a lot of people together, you put a, 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 a wall around for protection, and then you have power and centralized abilities. You have people that are close together that can depend on each other. Urbanization. You know, the Babylonians also believe in astrology and horoscopy, you know, the, you know, the religious examination of the skies. But there's an interesting scientific uh, connection there. You look up to the stars and you wonder, what are those? Hmm. That's interesting. And then you... It's astronomy, right? You figure out, where did that come from? And the question just begs it in a scientific answer. So the Babylonians looked up. We sort of get that from them as well. Also, the concept of time came from the Babylonians. You know, they, 
of course, they were looking up at the sky. They noticed that the sun did certain things every once in a while. And they, they figured out, hey, you know, there's a certain number of numerical uh, pattern that tells us that this is a day, this is another day. And a lot of people took those. The, the, um, uh, and the Roman Empire was one of those as well. They also had the concept of the sailboat, travel. You and I had to travel to go places. My family and I today, we traveled in our vehicles from Tampa and it took us an hour and 10 minutes, right? I put the GPS, I put uh, the, uh, the cruise control, and good, we're good to go. And all of these concepts, Babylon was on the cutting edge of those things. The, um, and I gotta say here that Babylon was the context, the community, the place where our spiritual ancestors were taken to after the land of Israel was plundered and taken away. We know the Bible says that, right? So, I hope that you have your Bible today, because our scripture reading is from the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, and um, Ezekiel, do you know that he was a contemporary of Jeremiah? Where was Jeremiah at? They lived at the same time, right? Where was Jeremiah at, for those of you that are Bible scholars? Was Jeremiah in Babylon, or was Jeremiah in Israel? Jerusalem. What do you think? That's right. Jeremiah was in Jerusalem, whereas Ezekiel was with the people who were taken captive to Babylon. And so, uh, as a matter of fact, I love Ezekiel, and that's what we're going to focus time today, my, my friends, because Ezekiel's name literally means God will strengthen and Ezekiel was to inspire and strengthen the generation of Israelites, God's people that were now captive in Babylon. Babylon is this immense beast of cultural influence for that time. Can you imagine being a, a, a godly person, a God-fearing person that lives in a society that is so dominant in all of its aspects? By the way, I didn't mention that Babylon had a very strong religion. A very strong moral code, as per their view. Babylon, as you and I know, we're Adventist Christians that spend a lot of time in the Word, Babylon was not only a physical place of influence, but a spiritual force. And the people of God that were exiled existed in Babylon. Children were being born in the community and in the influence of Babylon. Mm. I'm sure, not a lot today, that those who weren't homeschooled were, had to go to the schools, the public schools, and, and be indoctrinated, sorry, I just use that word, but I will, indoctrinated in the ways of the Babylonian culture and religion and faith and the way of being. And they grew. And their generations were cemented and rooted into Babylon. Hence, we have the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, where the prophet of God was led in the Spirit to discuss the gospel. Are you there with me? Ezekiel, chapter 37, come with me. And we're going to go to verse 1. And I love this. Just open your eyes and just look at this in, in your mind's eye. Really, just pray and ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, show me what we're seeing here in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 1. The Bible says, you with me? Amen? Amen. I hope you have your Bible, whether it's the papyrus or the silicone in your hands. <laughs> Amen? So, verse 1 says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley. And the valley was full of what? Bones. bones. The valley was full of bones. Verse 2, Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed... The bones were very what? When I was a child, I was petrified of cemeteries. I remember my, you know, when my mom and dad would drive us past the cemetery, I knew it was there. I would hide in just the bowels of the vehicle because it just scared the living pants off of me. And I wouldn't, I, I had nightmares. I don't know why, I was just traumatized, right? Can you imagine being Ezekiel and, and the Spirit is taking you to this valley full of bones? And you see a valley full of bones. What comes to mind? I don't know about you, but especially today, 
But we have uh, this Eastern European country in the middle of a war where they're men, they're boys. I want to say boys because they're not really men, they're boys and girls. They're children. I'm looking at you right now. You look, you're a young adult. Yeah, sorry, I pointed at you. Yeah, I point. I point. You would be sent out to war. And right now we have a country out there that their young men have to be sent out to war to protect themselves. Can you imagine Ezekiel looking at that valley? What's the first thing that came to mind? This is our people. And the Bible says that he looked, and it's very notable that it was the bones were very dry. It's not like when we go to the woods and we see a deer that was killed, it's sort of just, you know, decomposing. It still has some hair. And, and no, no, these bones were dry. I imagine that the marrow inside was gone. The Bible says verse 3. And he said to me, and he asked a question that everybody should be asking. God asking Ezekiel, son of man, are you ready? Can these bones live? What a question, my friends. It's actually a rhetorical question that God asks Ezekiel. It's a question that is rooted in the power of the spirits of prophecy. It is actually a prophetic question. Can these bones live again? You know, I, I, full disclosure, I've preached this sermon many times. And I felt impressed to preach it again today. Do you know why? We live in a very confusing time. Mm -hmm. We live in a time, and I always thought, man, you know, the end days are going to be a time of, uh, in a Bible say, you know, it's going to be a very horrible time where people are going to be hating each other and killing each other, and, and there's going to be all kinds of, type, you know, all kinds of lawlessness, and, and we have that, that part of prophecy, right? Just the craziness of the end times, murder, and, and the hearts of many will just grow cold. But there's also a sense of morality or a sense of right that isn't necessarily, and, I, and I'm going to be honest with you, it, it, it may be misguided. Because it's not based and founded in the words of Christ. Maybe the application of that morality is hoping that it makes this world into the new heaven. That this is it. That we just look here and we go no further. Maybe like the Babylonians trying to make their Babylon a better place to live. Let me, let me answer the question that we're all asking. Can these bones drop and live again? I'm worried, church family. I'm worried that many of us here, and I'm, I'm putting myself... Many of us here that know Christ and have known Him before uh, go through cycles of life and death, right? Are you with me? Spiritual life and spiritual death. And trust me, I know the Word of God very well, but the question is, can I come back to spiritual life? And what does that mean? Well, let's, let's look at what happened with Ezekiel. This is the answer. I just gave you a problem that's going to be, that's very, very, I gave you a question that's very controversial. If I die now, Pastor, I hope you come up with sins because I have left you unsatisfied with the problem. But look at the solution. Look at this. Go back to Ezekiel chapter 37. And in verse 3 again, he says to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So Ezekiel's a smart guy. He said, Lord, you know. Of course. The answer is always with who? God. Come on, folks. Are you sure? Yes. The answer is with who? God. God has all the answers, my friend. And he said, he said, Lord, you know. You know, there was someone that asked that question to Jesus as well. So if, if we actually find that same question being asked in Matthew uh, chapter 12. So come with me. Keep your fingers, though, in Ezekiel chapter 37. Go back with me to Matthew chapter 12. All right. When you're there, just simply say amen. Matthew chapter 12. We're going to read in verse 39 as well. Okay. Matthew chapter 12, verse 39. Let's see if I can find it. Boom. Here we go. Um, beginning with verse 38, sort of the context, when you're there saying that. Okay? The same question was asked Jesus. And it was actually, in verse 38, it was asked by the scribes and the Pharisees. And they asked him. Some of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. These are the pastors and, and the important people in the community, the elders and, and the, the academics. 
They asked Jesus, dude, you say all these things, right? But give us a sign. We've heard everything that you said. It sounds pretty good. We've never heard it before like that. But prove it. Give us a sign. And Jesus could have done that. He could have, he could have turned some more water into wine or water into juice. I don't know. He could have done it. He could have said, okay, come here. You're short just like Manny? Poof, I just made him six feet tall. That's a sign. But that wouldn't have converted their hearts. That would not have brought them back to life. The scariest thing I could ever say. Even though we have all the signs in the world, that still doesn't bring spiritual life from spiritual death. Look what Jesus said. Look what Jesus, this is powerful. Look what Jesus says. But he answered and said to them, an adulterous and, and, and evil and adulterous generation, they seek after a sign. But no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet who? Jonah. Prophet Jonah. By the way, church family, what was the sign given to prophet Jonah? Mm -hmm. Let's let Jesus tell us what that is. Verse 40. He says, For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He said, verse 41, The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. Who's that? Jesus. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. Who's that? Jesus. Greater than Jonah? Why is Jesus greater than Jonah? Let's go. Verse 42. The queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. Who's greater than Solomon? Jesus. Jesus. Nobody can convert those pastors like me, but Jesus. So we go back to Ezekiel. Let's go back. Come on. I hope you had your finger there. And God is taking Ezekiel through this valley to show him the graphic nature of spiritual death. Verse 4. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, Oh, dry bones, hear of the Lord, the word of the Lord. So the question is, how can I go from spiritual death to spiritual life? Because, listen, I've been a Christian for a very long time and in ministry, and I can't tell you how many homes I've gone into with all of our Bible studies, and I couldn't convert those people. Why? The Holy Spirit's job is to convert. Amen. They'd come to church for a little bit, and they were out. Out. Because I fail to convert them because I am not the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says here, this is awesome. The Bible says that God told Ezekiel something very important. He told Ezekiel, I need you to prophesy. Now, friends, you and I know that that word prophesy is very confusing. There's whole denominations today that exist in the concept of prophesy. And they're confused. I gotta be respectful here, but I, I was watching um I was watching this uh, this church service. Not not one of our churches, it's not an Adventist church, but it was a church service that was laughing because they felt that this laughter came from the Holy Spirit. So the pastor was doing this laughter, and as soon as he breathed on the person, this person would start to laugh hysterically. And that meant that the Holy Spirit was there. Or you had the gift of them. All biblical things, right, right, right. But you impart these, you, you shoot these things out, right? And these are signs of the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, wait a minute. Stop. What does it mean to prophesy? Well, you and I know, especially as Adventist Christians, that the concept of prophecy is crucial. It's crucial. So we got to get it right. So what is it? Come with me to the book of Revelation. Chapter 19. Keep your fingers on Ezekiel 37. But come with me to Revelation chapter 19. And you know where I'm going, of course. You know, this is the angel. That, this is um, John all about bowing down to this angel. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. Right? Um, let's go verse 9. I love the context. And, and, and look what happens with regards to prophecy. Prophecy. Verse 9. Then he said to me, right? Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. 
I am your fellow servant, and I'm your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. And he said here, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What does it mean to prophesy? <coughs> well, my friends, listen. Let me just make it clear. Because now we have the testimony of Jesus, but we haven't even unpacked what it means to prophesy. Let's go one thing at a time. Because Ezekiel was shown a valley full of bones that had no hope. And the question is, will these bones live again? The question is, can we help to convert those that we love so that Jesus comes, their hearts are ready for him? The question is, in this crazy, insane, confused Babylonian world, is, it, is there even hope left? The answer is, yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. And it's found in the book of Revelation. Yes. In the testimony of Jesus, imparted by the spirit of prophecy. But what is prophecy? Because, to be honest here, some of us think that prophecy is a little old lady that lived a long time ago. The spirit of prophecy. If you look at the, at, at the definition of the spirit of prophecy, you look at the picture, it's not a sweet little old lady hundred years ago, even though that spirit of prophecy used her. What's the spirit of prophecy? First of all, prophesy is to understand and proclaim the truth concerning God's gospel, especially in the face of prevalent ignorance or opposition. This is what is meant by the holding of the testimony of Jesus. To prophesy means that you take the word of God that is active and living and sharper than any double-edged sword, and you give that word to someone, and it goes into their heart, and it changes them. Amen. You with me? But let's put that honey on that cake. That prophecy gives the testimony of Jesus. Amen. Without the testimony of Jesus, why prophesy? Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Without the testimony of Jesus, why would we even bother prophesying? That's right. Listen, I was raised as a Christian, and I remember when I cut my hair wrong, you look like a hoodlum. Go grow your hair and come back. And the first thing I felt was rejection. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that person represented Jesus. That's not what Jesus is. The gospel says I can come back from life to death because of what Jesus has done. And what does prophecy do? Prophecy is the imparting of that reality so powerfully that the spirit changes my life. Amen. It's an opening of my eyes. It's an opening of our consciousness. It's an opening of our lives to the reality and the truth of God. Because there's so many people with closed eyes today that are even reading Bible. Mercy. Mercy. So we go back to Ezekiel. Actually, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. The testimony of Jesus. Tain hamartian yesu to. The testimony of Jesus. The loss to Jesus. I love that Greek concept. Tain hamartian yesu to. The testimony of Jesus. My friends, what's the testimony of Jesus? That God sent his son to the world. John 3, 16, come on. Mm -hmm. John, God sent his son to the world. Yes. He came in the, in the form of a child, a baby, and he grew for 33 and a half years. And then he died for you and I. And now he's in heaven interceding for you and I. That's the testimony of Jesus. It's the gospel. It's the fact that even though I'm a wretched human being, that I can leave this church today and I will be as wretched as I was, Jesus says, no, I have you. Come to me. And I will renew you. Amen. To life. Yeah. Amen. That's the gospel. And the beauty is that the gospel is given by his spirit. Mm -hmm. The testimony of Jesus. Some explain as the testimony was proceeds from Jesus. So Jesus, by imparting this testimony to believers, imparts them the spirit of prophecy. Others, the witness which is born to Jesus. The way of bearing this witness, the substance and essence of this testimony, is the spirit of prophecy. Powerful. So now we have Ezekiel. Go back. Ezekiel chapter 37. Go back. Because now the Bible says, the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 37, 
God tell me, Ezekiel, I need you to prophesy. Verse 5 now. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Verse 6. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh among you, cover you with skin, put breath in you, and you shall, what? Live. Live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Mm. So what does Ezekiel do? My friend, he prophesied. My friend, he prophesied after God's word told him to prophesy. My friend, Ezekiel prophesied to these bones after he heard the word of God. And he put it in his heart. And he believed the word of God. And it became his life. Then he prophesied. But why was it important to prophesy? Because the people of God were dead. Because you and I have family members that don't believe in God. Because you and I are raising children that we are struggling to figure out in the madness of this world in the contradictions of this world how to impart to them the gospel of Jesus so they can be in heaven with us. Why is it important to prophesy? Because tomorrow the devil can distract us so badly that our eyes are taken away from Jesus. Why is it so important to prophesy? The question that everybody's asking is can these dead bones live? But you're wondering, okay, very good. That's fine, it's all good and dandy, but I've been here for a long time and I haven't seen it yet. What's going on? Come with me to John. Let's go back to what Jesus said, right? Let's go to John chapter 14. Keep your fingers on that. Is he killed? Okay. John chapter 14. Go back to John chapter 14. With you. When you're there, just simply, my friends, say amen. Amen. Oh, you guys are alive. I love it. John chapter 14 and verse 16. And let's go to verse 15. Love, I love the okay, Sorry, I love context. It has to happen. So the question here is, how can I live again? You know, Manny, I like your sermon today. Or, you know, either one can be the reality. But, what? okay, you know, I want to live again. I want to live again. How would I live again? Open God's word. Mm. Take the words of Jesus and put them in your heart. Amen. Then what do you, what happens next? John chapter 16. The 14 verse 19. Oh, uh, 15, sorry. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. <laughs> I tried that, Jesus, right? Verse 16. And I will pray the Father, oh, it's going to be interesting, and he will give you another helper that he may be, he, that he may abide with you for how long? Forever. And what is he? The Spirit. No, I don't need the Spirit. <laughs> helper. Right? Verse 17. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you forever. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And then let's jump over to verse 25. Then listen to this very carefully, my friends. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your what? Remembrance all things that I have said to you. Think about this. The, whole, the disciples were with Jesus for three and a half years. They listened to everything that Jesus did. They witnessed the miracles and, and the raising of people from the dead. Judas didn't get it. Wasn't converted. Peter, Matthew, Thomas, all of those guys observed it. And not until the Holy Spirit came could those things be cemented and brought in deep so they can live it. The Holy Spirit brought the cross. The Holy Spirit implanted the cross. My friend, Romans chapter 8 proves it. Hmm? Before I go to Romans chapter 8, let me again emphasize John chapter 25 and 26. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. And he said, verse 27, peace I leave to you. I like it. Amen? But the, what does the Holy Spirit really do? Romans chapter 8. This is where prophecy of the Spirit is powerful. Romans chapter 8, verse 25. What does the Holy Spirit do? I hope you're catching up because our time is so short. Romans chapter 8, verse 25. What does the Holy Spirit really do? Let me make sure I'm right Romans chapter 8, verse 25. 
Uh, but if we hope for a world we do not see, we eagerly wait with it for perseverance, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He goes deep and he converts. I yearn for him. I need him. I'm powerless to change. I don't know about you, but if you think you're not powerless to change, think again. Thing. Going back to Ezekiel, my friends, because things were happening. The Holy Spirit finally came in. Look at this. So, Ezekiel verse 7, chapter 37 of Ezekiel, he says, So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together. Boom, boom. And verse 8. And indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Again, he said, prophesy. What do you mean, prophesy, Lord? Call upon the Holy Spirit in faith, in the truth of God. Prophesy. Call him. Prophesy, he said. He also said, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of God. And say to the men, thus says the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that I may live. When was the last time in prayer meeting that we said, man, these pews are empty? Lord God, send your spirit to bring those into the deep. Man, these pews are empty. Not that they are very much today, for God. There's a few of those faces. Yeah, but you know who's missing because somebody that you know may not be here, or, or someone you know is struggling outside that we haven't seen in church for a long time. We have the right to call upon God's Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I prophesy for you to come down. You're probably still thinking, that sounds a little weird, man. But listen, wait, wait a minute. The concept of prophecy is calling in the name of Jesus, God's power to come down. So God can open the, the curtain and just wash away confusion and darkness. That's why we have the ministry of Elm Life. That's why we are unique. And the sea of denominations and religions. So he prophesied. And as he did it, the bones began to come together. The Bible says that not only did these bones come together and stand up, because by the way, there's a lot of us that are simply bones here sitting in the pews. <laughs> you are. I can't tell you how often I go to church and I'm simply bones sitting in that pew. What do I mean? Now, I look at the pastor's face and I think to myself, if he only knew. <laughs> if he only knew what I've been through this week. If he only knew how I almost didn't come because of the words I said at work or the way I treated people at work. If he only knew how many people cut me off and I curse them out. If he only knew how confused I am because of all the things that happened this week in the world with the Supreme Court. If you only knew how confused I am, angry I am with God, because I'm confused. My friends, I have faith that as we come to Jesus, He will make it clear. Make it clear. Listen, I would read the news when it said Roe v. Wade was upturned. I'm not even thinking. Oh, I've been here while we're living Pride Month. While I'm trying to teach my children according to the ways of God. And I'm thinking to myself, I think twice, three times. And I ask myself, how can I apply God's absolute, timeless message to this confusion? How can I be sensitive to those that are really struggling with one thing, but then understand the other side? And I come here today to tell you the solutions, we don't find them in the men, minds of men and the arguments of both eyes. We find them in the Word of God. Amen. And i got to be honest with you. You may not like the answer that God gives you. You're not going to like it. No matter how many people decide so. You're not going to like it. You're going to maybe be angry with God. Paul was angry with God. Paul told God, listen, take it away from me. He said three times, take it away from God. I said, no. My grace is sufficient for me. 
for my power and perfect weakness. Paul, his, the theme in his life was suffering. Suffering. And then you think this confusion of homosexuality is, is just limited to our modern day? No. There have been people in history that have chosen God's absolute impossible will instead of what they feel. They lived and they stood upon their feet an exceeding great army.
How many times did I say the word prophecy? Way over there? Way over there? In the back? With the white shirt? 45? Okay, somebody up here. How many times did I say the word gospel? Gospel. Did I say that at all? Yes, sir. Six times? Six times? Okay. Okay, six times. Anybody else? Yes? 31. 31 times? No, gospel. Seven. Yes, yeah, seven. Oh, he was reading seven. the wrong one yet. Okay. Oh, no, it's okay. That's cool. Listen. And you? Six. Six? All right. Yes, ma'am. Five? <laughs> yes, over there, in the back. Four. Four? Should have said it more. <laughs> gospel, 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 gospel. I came from death to life. That's the gospel and the testimony of Jesus. Are you listening? Amen. So there's a song. Sorry to be so loud and cute. <laughs> there's. We want to cement this word in our hearts. And I, well, I want to give you an opportunity to come in prayer with two songs. Okay, with two songs. We miss a special music with two songs. Amen. And I don't know about you, but music, it, it, it moves my heart. Amen. I want, during this time, I want to invite you to meditate on what we have just gone through. Please open Ezekiel and meditate on the last part of that, on what God wants us to do. Um, and so, I'm going to let Jen and Gladi do that and sit down. And just focus on the words, spend time in the word, and ask yourself, have I answered that question?
I encourage you and we pray for you that as a church family, the best thing you can do is just spend time with God's Word. I know that there's so much pressure for us to do well in this ministry, do really good in this ministry, do put a lot of money here, put a lot of money there, and we play this church game really well, right? But the base of what we do, our foundation is in the Word of God. Amen. The foundation is that each of us come to Jesus, then we come together, and we simply spend time with Him. Then He will direct our paths. Amen. Then He will use us. And then the bones begin to rattle, and, 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 and that body of that great army will, will come together. But we first must go to our Lord God. Just focus on that. Um, I'm not going to pray, but I know we have a, a closing hymn, Pastor. We do. <laughs> so um, I'll give us the opportunity to do that, and then I'll have the benediction after that. So I, I'm sure we'll have to stay on our feet for right now. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen.
Lord, let us communicate your grace, your love. Lord, help us to live in your spirit so that we can communicate, Father, that this is not the world that we invest in, but we are working for the kingdom of God. So, Lord, today is to change our hearts. Help us to leave here, Lord, blessed and strengthened that if we fall again, you are quick to raise us up. Lord, we ask these humbly, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As we depart, we're going to sing, Heaven came down and glory filled my soul.